a fan-made arcade game where you are given an all-new set of co-op commanders to work with and you get to play them on the co-op map. So to get to Nexus Coop, you go to Custom, you go to Arcade, and you type Nexus Coop in the search bar, then click this one with the orange icon. You can play alone or you can play with friends, but whenever you're ready, you get to start the game. And just wait for the loading screen, where you'll have all this information about the map itself and the creators of Nexus Coop. So today, as requested by Lucinus and Pyrrhonus, we will be playing as Zeratul, who I've found is just as overpowered in Nexus Coop as he is in real co-op and maybe even more overpowered, but for the first game, we will actually go with zero total attack damage, cooldown of IR support, and zero total skill cooldown because I'll be doing the first game as hero and top bar solo, no units. The map will be void thrashing, where we will need to destroy the void thrashers as they appear in the map. Let's get to that game right away. Again, the objective is to destroy the Void Thrashers before they completely eliminate Sergeant Hammer's useless fortress. So, as the game starts, the very first thing I want to do before even making a single worker is to start a pylon, because the pylon will power this Shakura's Warp Gate, which when it's powered, it will start a cooldown on the bottom right of the command card. The cooldown will allow you to call down Zeratul. So, when the pylon completes, you can see the cooldown will start to run and that will allow me to call down zero tool. It's only a time-based cooldown, it doesn't cost any money. And then while I'm producing workers, I make these two assimilators because they will be needed for upgrades. I think I actually botched my build order for this one, which is not too bad considering I'm only really limited to zero tool. I'm not gonna have units out here, so getting my economy, not as important. Still important, but not as important. Especially in the early game. I like the green thing. Do I, if I switch off the colors, it is still green, I like that. By the way, uh, to switch colors, you just do this thing. Switch colors. I've been asked that question a lot, and yeah, just click these colors to alternate between your own colors and the default colors in Nexus Coop, and even co-op. So, as soon as Zeratul is available, I will be able to call down. But for now, I'm working on my tech tree. I'll start a Cybernetics Core and a Twilight Council, or rather, uh, uh, was it called a Dark Council or something? I think, it was, I think it's called a Dark Council. So you can see, as soon as the cooldown goes off, I warp in Zeratul. He needs to be warped in where there is power. So yes, it is called a Dark Console. The Dark Console allows me to buy Zero Tools upgrades from the Forge. So I need a Dark Console and a Forge to get his upgrades. So yes, it is on the way. Again, not the exact build order. Probably not even a good build order, but that is what we have. I'm a bit curious about why the next scoop guys feel that they need to give a Chrono to every single building of Zero Tool. Why not just have them straight up build faster? If every single building has Chrono, then no building has Chrono. Like Syndrome says. Anyway. So Zero Tool does have that Shadow Cleave. It only hits ground though. It does not shoot up as I've learned in this video. So you can see he does still shoot really fast. And you can see I have used this top one here. The first one will sort of put all the enemies in a black hole except it instead of dragging it to the center it just kind of makes them despawn and deals a bit of damage to those units as well. Zeratul you can see has blink and effectively brings him out here as far out as you need him to be. So he has three charges of blink because I researched it. I also got that upgrade. I don't know I don't know what the upgrade is. You can see you can clearly see I don't know my, I still don't know my way around Zeratul's upgrades because I got a completely useless upgrade that just gives him an after image effect when he's walking. It doesn't do anything as far as I know. I could be wrong, but I don't think it does anything. <laughs> Zeratul himself is a detector in Nexus Coop, so that's really nice. He also has that barrier thing, void armor, which helps him stay alive in the field. 
walk in through here and start whacking these guys. You can see the bailings still do damage, and that's kind of funky. So, in a few seconds, I'll have the Void Seeker available. It is a powerful top bar. It kind of feels like a Hyperion of sorts that shoots while moving, but it moves really fast. It doesn't have a deep tunnel or a tactical jump. But it does move really fast, and you can see it shoots really fast as well. It's kind of bullying this hybrid over here. Meanwhile, Zertul is working on these small guys and whacking them one by one. The next top bar is available. That one is Support of Ire. It summons a gigantic or a titanic war prism anywhere without vision. You can see. I, I just spawned in the middle without even getting vision of it, and it summons a bunch of warriors. You have Talus here, you have High Templar, you have Adurps, you have Zalots, you have Phoenixes all fighting. Meanwhile, Zeratul is walking back here to intercept the attack wave. Just jump over here and use the, the Shadow Cleave. Meanwhile, the top bar, the top bar thing is still working very hard, and I've actually summoned the last set of hybrids early and they are already being taken care of the phoenix as you can see are shooting down these thrashers and i forgot to mention this but you can rally the summoned warriors from the titanic war prism you select the titanic war prism you use the psi emitter let's call it and rally your forces to wherever you want them to go you can see it cleared out almost all of the defenders in this last set of hi uh, this last set of thrashers and that kind of allows Zeratul to just have free reign. Of course, after deleting these detector things, Zeratul does have the Void Presence though, which is pretty good at containing enemies and making detection not a thing. You can see, I just spam this Shadow Cleave and blink away whenever I need to. Delete that creep. I use Void Prison to make their detection not available. And only thing left is to kill this Void Thrasher. You can see Zeratul has a fairly fast attack speed. He does not get the benefit of the Forge upgrades, but he's still really strong. He takes down Thrashers in close to no time. So now I only have three Thrashers remaining, the last set, which is now the last set. And all I have to do is walk over there, wait for the Void Seeker to be available, and then just kind of use it. Of course, since I don't have an army, I'll just deflect the attack wave using Zeratul. Let's make this not a thing. Void prison that. Use the storm thing. This, yeah, the black hole top. I can see they kind of shrink and they get out of... They kind of despawn. So it kind of functions like the old black hole. The, the Wings of Liberty beta black hole. That actually despawns enemies. But then they respawn after a certain period. So just kind of cleaning house here. Enemy is Zerg so the Bailings do hurt. Even when I kill them before they actually connect. Because Zerzel is a melee unit. So now the Titanic War Prism is once again available. That is a support of Iron cooldown. That is why I got that mastery. It's a really good mastery. You can see it's just, it's just an instant army to aim on its face. And you even have this field here that I think slows down enemy forces. I think it's a time warp. It slows down enemy forces and just allows the summoned army to have even more of, of ability here. And the Void Seeker once again available. And just quickly end this map like an 8 no thing. Look, it's not even 11 minutes. That's pretty good. Essentially, I solo this map without an army. Only top bars and zero tool. It still is almost as fast as a duo clear with no regular co-op commanders. Let's move on to game two. Game two will be on Void Launch. I believe I changed the first mastery set from zero tool attack speed to combat unit attack speed because I will be going this for this game, and I believe I have a slightly less bad build order. Again, it's only like my fourth game as zero tool here. I kind of I tried to ask about all marketing, but he was not available during the time, so I just kind of winged it. 
I played one game of Proving Ground to see what Zertul stuff do and just like in real co-op, Zertul stuff are really OP. Once again, I start with a quick pylon. Before anything else, I want to power this gateway once again to get Zertul out as quickly as humanly possible. And then, pro production here. You can see the probes do not cost supply. If you look at the top right corner, the probes cost zero supply. Next, I start a cybernetics core to kind of rush out my tech tree. Then I start a gas. There we go. So yeah, the nice thing about Zeratul's workers is that they don't cost supply, so you don't have to sacrifice workers at the end. And just kind of clean house using your fully maxed army. Now we're going to have the cyber core finish. And I quickly learned that the dark core of course costs gas. I tried to start the dark core, but I need gas for it. So <laughs> that, yeah... This build order, I think, is less bad than the first, but still pretty bad. I'm gonna need a few more games of Zertul to kind of understand how this build works, but... So far, it, it's not really needed. <laughs> I, I just soloed a co-op map on brutal difficulty without an army, so I think I'm fine as far as builds go. Now, if I'm gonna try a, a difficult mutation or a speedrun, of course I need every advantage I can get, every build order knowledge I can get, but for now... It's not needed. As you can see, Zertul starts right when he becomes available. And I start the Dark Council and the Forge pretty much at the same time. That will help me out in terms of getting Zertul's upgrades really fast. So now for my control groups, I put the Shakur's Warp Gate in the usual production group, production structure group, and I put everything else. So you can see in the Cybernetics Core, the Dark Council, and pretty much every tech structure. I will be able to get upgrades, so there are three sets of upgrades per unit. The first set, you can get every single one in the first set. In the second and third set, you can choose only one upgrade. I didn't really memorize what each upgrade does, but in the second and third set, you only have one available, or, or rather, you have three avail available to pick from, but you can only actually select one of them, so you kind of have to read what each ability does and then pick the one that's most relevant for you. So the way Zeratul's production works is that everything is summoned from this warp gate. You have charges that you can call down. The units still cost minerals and gas, and you, they still need to be warped in the power field, but you can see you can call down, you can call down Zalots, Stalkers, Sentries, High Templar, Dark Templar, and Immortals. Of course, Zeratul himself, but they have charges as well as money costs. So now I'm just getting upgrades. You can see Zertal upgrades here. I've, I've wisened up and I've not gotten this R upgrade anymore. I, I, think it's, I think it's not really useful for anything. I used the Void Armor. I just disabled that Missile Turret. Make it not a thing. You can see I'm just continuously printing workers and getting more upgrades for my units. This time getting a Stalker upgrade. That'll come useful later on. Attack wave on the way. They don't look too friendly. Shadow cleave that. Shadow cleave this. Just make those guys not a thing. Zertal is still really strong. He just whacks through everything like they're nothing. Anyway, I'm warping in my first unit a sentry, which makes it puzzling that I chose to go for a stalker upgrade first, but it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. So in the first row of this Dark Council, you have Zalot upgrades. In the second row, you have Stalker upgrades. And in the bottom, you have an icon of a Zalot and an icon of a Stalker. That just kind of shows you your loadout for what abilities you have unlocked. So you can see the the call down, the, the support of Iyer is once again available. And I'll just kind of call it down here. And once again, just summons a time warp which slows down and all enemy forces inside that bubble. And you can see... More units are being summoned directly onto the field. You have High Templar here, Adurps, Phoenixes, all whacking that enemy. And you can see that I just rallied it here to the end of the map. Meanwhile, the Void Seeker is also out. It's also just deleting everything. It doesn't have Yamato. It doesn't have 
the tactical jump, but it does shoot the enemies really fast. So you can see it's helping us out over here. Just cleaning house. And just like that, even before the 730 wave, I've already cleaned out one of the bases of Void Launch. And that is really neat. You can see the probe is already starting a base over here. And it's actually really a good idea to get base all around the map. All around the map because as I said before, the workers don't cost money. So they just give you more income. So you can get more of these upgrades quickly. I will lose the sentry here because it's largely unupgraded, but not before doing a lot of damage using Zer tool. Mostly Zer tool, but you can see these are mostly saturated, saturated already. I do lose that sentry as you saw, but Zer tool just effectively cleaned it out. I love how these drones are here, just following. I feel like they're symbiotes of some sort. I disable the Robin and the turret using the Void Prison. And I just delete all these things. I blink these stalkers to the siege tank to put them out of range because they're too close. And now I'm just getting all these upgrades. You can see I'm still producing workers. And I will saturate this base. You can see I have three Nexus in the control group now. Three production structures and tech structures. One production structure. Next set is here. Zero tool already re-intercepting. And that's awesome. I think it's awesome. You can see this, the stalkers now have a Z ability, which I think is a, some sort of Yamato. It does deal tremendous damage. Yeah, you can see that that does a lot of damage. It looks impressive. So now, I run Zero Tool over to this side. Try to make sure that we're available to fight this wave. Just clean out this area. Make them not a thing. I use the black the black hole. Yeah, the black hole ability again. To kind of make the enemy not a thing. And now, the IR support is once again off cooldown. So I just use it on the base and make them not a thing. Phoenix is going crazy, High Templar, Talus, Zelots, just cleaning this entire base right here. Meanwhile, Zeratul out here, deleting this camp. We have Zeratul units, which these, Zer these Zelots regen, regen their shields instantly. That's pretty awesome. Eleven mid wave, delete that with Storms and Zeratul and just run right back here. You can see they're rallied to this point in the map. They will just clean out this one Balcruiser with something like six Phoenixes. So that's going to be a favorable fight. Although they're not doing as much damage as, they, as I hope they would. But still a lot. Meanwhile, my army is cleaning out. Dark Shrine is completed. So is the Signifier Archive and the Robotics Bay. So that will allow me to get the Dark Templar, the High Templar, and the Immortal. To just max out. The nice thing about Zer tool is that even though you're capped at 100 supply, it's pure army because again, the workers cost no supply. So I can just keep, I can just keep saturating my, my bases, just keep making workers, and I won't fill. I won't eat into my 100 supply. Delete this Ghost Academy before it finishes the nuke. Fantastic can see my <laughs> army is just camping now. It's, we're actually just camping now. And <laughs> I'll just let the Void Seeker delete this. Meanwhile, I've started a fourth base here because three base is good, but four is even better, especially when workers don't cost supply. I'm just kind of spamming out the units now, the units and the upgrades, because I have all the money. I'm just rallying workers here, building pylons all around the map as a warping point. Next wave is at 14 minutes, and that will just be cleaned easily. You can see I'm starting to get all these upgrades, plus 3 attack. The what is Zealot upgrades, High Templar upgrades, Robo upgrades, you name it. Dark Templar upgrades, everything. 
So here I am, just saturating this last base so I get even more army. Warping in more dudes here. Casually, just farming lots of army. Just warp in, or rather blink in. And you can see, I use the field here of the High Templar. That will actually mind control enemies. You can see I got a fire butt out of that. Not the best unit, but stealing units is always fun in co-op. They may be terrible, but any you can steal is also awesome. You can see I just stole the siege tank here and then the Thor. Gotta love, gotta love seeing that. And I don't think these time out. It doesn't look like the type of mind control that times out. It just is there permanently. I am starting to float money, so I am just trying to get more and more army. And it's a clean map. So now I'm just sitting pretty and waiting for the attack waves to spawn and just deleting them. That's just how insanely powerful Zero Tool is. This is one bridge just standing around there hoping he wasn't going to get noticed, but he did get noticed. I intercept this shuttle over here. Just casually delete this shuttle wave. The sentries, I believe, have healing, which, depending on which upgrade you get, can let your units take less damage or regen faster. They have a banshee here, so Zeratul's only weakness, probably, I would say, is mobile detection. Because Zeratul's only mobile detection is Zeratul himself. So he needs to be everywhere like that you're fighting Cloaky Boys. I might actually, yes, I do in fact. Wow, that's a big explosion right there. I didn't even notice that. That's insane. You are not going okay. Zeratul has to get back here to kind of intercept this force. My army is good enough to clean out this whole wave on its own. Zeratul is going to take care of this Banshee. But the army can just clean house without any help whatsoever. Of course, you can't have a Nexus Coop commander. Without that commander being stronger than the actual co-op commander. Even though Zeratul in regular co-op is already really good. But you just have Nexus Coop guys ramping things up to 11. So you can see every single upgrade, every single unit specific upgrade has been gotten. I'm just getting forge upgrades at this point. And try to max out. I'm actually close to maxing out. You can see each unit of Zeratul is, is capped. You can only have... A certain number of units and that will allow you to max out at exactly 100 supply and there's a lot because why not attack wave or rather shuttle wave will be cleaned out in short order <laughs> that was quick that was quick I split up my army Zeratul will take care of this side delete that banshee meanwhile my army is out here cleaning this space and now I start the pylons it's it's gonna be camping time soon so I'll start these pylons here to power my cannons yes Zeratul does have cannons which is why I specifically mentioned earlier mobile detection we have a single hybrid here which will go down to high Zeratul really quickly now we're just gonna camp this attack wave and see how fast that attack wave disappears Let's wait for that. I believe these immortals, these confessors, have knocked back. Okay. We got enemy forces Four. inbound on our base. Yeah. That attack wave from spawn to deletion is six seconds. That attack wave lasted all six seconds before being quickly deleted. My goodness, Zertul. The Nexus Coop guys really cannot just have a commander. That's not way, way, way stronger than their next scoop or their, their, than their regular co-op counterpart. You just, they just can't. It's illegal for them. So now, second to the last shuttle wave. I'm gonna wait here and just banking more and more money. This water supply I have is all armed, by the way. And with that, all my units are now unbuildable because I have a, a certain limit of units Per game as their tool. You can see the cannons kind of blocking each other out, but I guess it's for the best. Because I need to spend my money on something, you know? 
Otherwise, the 1v1 players will start complaining about my macro. Although I guess I have the maxed out immunity. Having a bank in 1v1 is bad until you're maxed out. When you're maxed out, that's when the bank becomes good. Because that's your remax. But nobody nobody watches this for 1v1 advice. And nobody should, to be honest. But I like how the High Templar the signifiers are also cloaked. That'll kind of help them stay alive. So this R ability of the signifiers will give them mind control. A circle will appear on the ground where they use this ability and they will be able to mind control any unit. Got an enemy attack coming for our base. Zero tool cleaning this wave. Meanwhile, my army... My army just deleting this. I didn't lose a single unit whatsoever. Not one single unit lost. That's just how incredibly powerful Zero tool is in Nexus Coop. I guess the only enemies that survived are the rocks here and player 2's base. So now I have these probes putting down cannons. Cannons on the way. Cannons uh, placed already. And cannons being planned. So all I have to do is wait for the last wave to spawn and delete that last wave to make it not a thing. End the game. We've gathered the data we need. Yeah. Just take note guys, this is my fourth ever game of Nexus Coop. Or of their tool in Nexus Coop. And already I'm cleaning house like it's nothing. Of course, it kind of helps that I'm playing a slower speed. But really, all you have to do is make good units. And in Zertul's case, that's any units. And you'll be fine. The Loki... Loki doesn't last that long. Gets deleted instantly. And now... Another set. Just get just gets one shot. Just gets super camped. You have these shuttles being just spawn camped right here. <laughs> and of course, the Void Seeker as the coup de gras to end the game. And he's just oh, he's just so over the top. I thought Zertul and Co-op was already really strong, but Zertul Nexus Coop just has to up the ante. You just can't have a commander in Nexus Coop that's comparable to real Co-op. They just they're just so strong. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have an idea of what else you can do, please leave that in a comment. I will see you guys next time.